Okay, guys. Today we're doing some more work. Uh, seems like it never ends. Anyway, uh, today we are working on this old Mercedes. I don't know if you can see the rust. See the rust along the doors. Um, I'm learning that this is a common problem with these old C-Class Mercedes. And uh, from what people have, have commented on and from what I'm learning, I'll show you what causes the problem in mine and several other people's opinions. There is a rubber door protector right here on the bottom edge. And that is so when you open the door and it scrapes against a curb, it doesn't tear the paint off. <laughs> but what that door protector does is it traps all the moisture right there. And what happens is eventually your paint fails right along that edge and then the moisture along with road salt and dust starts working up under the paint and it just migrates up under the paint. And you can see on this, this back door here I've scraped most of the loose stuff off. The metal's pretty solid, and I'm, I'm hoping it is up here too, because it's a lot worse up here. But uh, the paint, you know, just, you can literally flake it off. I mean, it is, it is bad. And, uh, you know, like I said, it, I'm, I'm learning this is pretty common. Um, this old Mercedes, I picked it up a little over a week ago. Um, I was actually looking for over a week for any vehicle that had good glass and drove relatively decent um, for $1,500. And I mean, I hit five car lots. I was all over Craigslist. I drove all over Creation. Um, I started on a Saturday morning at 7 in the morning with a car dolly and cash in pocket drove all over, wasted three-fourths of a tank of gas, ended up, um, it was three o'clock in the afternoon, and I had given up, literally given up, because the dealerships either laughed at you or said, no, nope, we don't sell any of those kind of cars here, they all go to auction, or I would drive to look at a vehicle that, quote, had a miss to the engine, and when you get there, the engine wouldn't start, you jump start it, the engine knocked like crazy. The read the codes on the computer, it had three cylinders missing, two pages of errors. And uh, so I had literally given up and was coming back to attend a uh, birthday party. And I, and I was hot. I mean, I was mad. And, uh, you know, here I'd wasted all the gas all, all that time during the day. I had lots of work to do, but I was needing a vehicle to take some strain off the old exploder and so I can do some work on it and I came around the back side of the airport and sitting in a field was this Mercedes with a $900 price tag on the window and I thought to myself surely the transmission's out uh, it's turbo and there's something wrong with the turbos you know something has to be wrong long story short the old man just didn't need it anymore he had bought a brand new one. He only had a two-car garage, and both spaces were full. And he told me, quote, I just came back from a three-week business trip last night. I don't like dealing with a lot of people, so I set it out two hours ago for $900. Do you want to take it for a test drive? Long story short, I bought it for $900. Um, guy had literally had the service on it, $471 worth of service, less than a month earlier. He filled the tank up for me. There's $500 right there. And then he sold it to me for $900. Um, runs and drives excellent, but one of the main complaints he had when I asked him what was wrong with it, and I mean the guy had all the service, paperwork, everything, but his main complaint was this rust issue. And so we're going to try to tackle some of this today. Um, mainly just so it doesn't get worse. Um, I'm treating this car as a $900 car with a really awesome stereo and eight-way power leather seats, but I don't want it to get worse. So what we've got here, 
uh, you know, just a bunch of different kinds of sandpaper, just stuff I had laying around the house. Neighbors. <laughs> anyway, um, got some 3M stuff here I've never tried. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if we can scratch some of the rust off with it. And then, I uh, picked this stuff up at O'Reilly's. Now we used to use rust converter. You brush it on, um, used it for years, and just used some here a few weeks ago on the old 69 Ford floor pans. But this is some different stuff you spray it on. Um, it's not real cheap, it's about eight bucks a can, but we're gonna try it. And uh, then, to give a little added protection, this stuff is, you know, the new end thing, custom wrap. You can spray it on, it's a rubbery, kind of like plasti dip, tool dip, and uh, you can peel it back off later. If you don't like it, well, I remember back when General Motors used to coat the bottoms of their doors and their rocker panels with a rubberized paint coating that helped uh, protect everything from rock chips. And so I'm going to try this. You know, nothing else. If we don't like it, supposedly you can peel it right back off and we can put some regular paint on it. So I'm going to get to work here in a little bit, see if we can scuff some of this paint off of here. Um, but we'll show you what I've done. Hopefully it'll show up. Uh, I measured down off of this line right here, off this trim line, basically to the highest point where my rust is. And I come down four and a half inches. And I have used a magic marker, which is blue. It shows up red on here, which works pretty good, uh, or almost purple. And I have just laid a line out. That is my sand two line. And uh, I'm going to go through, of course, get rid of the rust, try to scuff up the paint up to that line. Then I will mask it off down to the line, and we'll do our magic, hopefully, with the spray cans. And uh, if it would have to look better. I mean, literally, it would have to look better than this. And, and no matter what we do, we're going to have to get some more protection for this metal. So um, we're going to see how it turns out. And, uh, you know, hopefully it looks decent. But, uh, you know, this is really just an experiment. Let's see what happens. Okay, guys, so... <sighs> The sun's kind of giving me some problems here. Hope hope you can see that. Here's what I'm left with. Um, I did try the 3M pads. They're good for scruffing the paint, but that's about it. Um, ended up using 80 grit, then 60 grit, or 120 grit, then uh, 400 grit. And uh, as you can see, I've got it masked off. This is just a rubber slip sheet. Um, that I've put there just to keep the overspray and everything from getting on there. You know, of course, I don't really care about the rusted part. It's all coming off anyway. But, uh, you know, we'll we'll pull this up to protect the wheel right here a little bit. But uh, it was blocking, it was shading everything, and you couldn't see it. So, anyway, I have cleaned it with uh, some solvent to get rid of all the dust and everything. Uh, I've wire brushed it even to get rid of most of the rust in the pits. And then I'm going to try this rust converter, duplicolor rust converter, and see what happens. Okay, well, I sprayed on some of the uh, rust converter, a couple of coats actually, and uh, it's already starting to turn black. It is pretty hot out here. Uh, may have a little problem though because I read some more on the can and it says to only use when the humidity is below 70%. And uh, we're toward the end of June. <laughs> humidity hasn't been below 70% for quite a while. And um, so it may take a while for this stuff to dry. And I may have to actually coat it with the uh, custom wrap tomorrow. Um, I'll keep an eye on it and I've got some chores to do. I'll come back out later and I'll keep an eye on it and if it uh, does seem to be pretty well dry then I will try spraying it over it. Um, 
you know, what's the worst that can happen? I can peel the custom wrap back off, let it dry some more. You know, worst case scenario, I have to sand it down a little bit again and redo it. Um, I mean, it's, it's already, other than the difference in the color, it's already looking way better than, you know, that mess up there did. So, we'll see what happens. Okay, we're back. Well, guys, as you can see, I started putting the custom wrap on. Uh, this color's called Carbon Black Matte. So, it looks pretty shiny right now, but we'll see how it turns out. But, uh, I don't know if you can catch the glare on there and everything. This uh, is the first coat and you know if this is how it turns out even after two or three coats uh, I don't know if it's showing up on the video but it is a little bumpy that's the pits left in the metal um, I'm gonna try to even that out as I spray a little more on but uh, you know if if that's how it looks when I'm done I'll be totally happy because like I said before that's a hundred times better than the flaky messed up mess up there so I have to let this dry for five minutes I'm gonna go in grab a drink and uh, I'll shoot another coat on it and I'll try to catch up with you after a couple of coats so we see what it looks like then but I'm losing light so I don't know I may have to actually go ahead and finish and clean up and then tomorrow where we've got some good sunlight uh, show you what it looks like and and we'll peel all the paper and everything off so you can actually see the difference between the original paint and this mess that I've put on here but uh, you know like I said if, if this is how it's gonna look and it'll be durable keep the water out of my doors and everything I'm happy okay guys well it's been a few days since I uh, did the work on this it seems to be holding up pretty good we've had a ton of rain it's been over 100 degrees and uh, you know as you can see there's what it used to look like there's what it looks like now um, the rains holding off for a while so I'm gonna try to tackle that up there here today I'm gonna do something a little bit different though um, after I peel all this rust and paint and everything off and sand it down and wire brush it and clean it I'm going to try to use some glazing putty in the pits uh, and everything I uh, don't know if you can see it right here if you look real close you can actually still see where the metal was etched into by the rust um, and I mean that's okay but I'm basically using this as an experiment to see you know products that are available now at this time what we can do with them and so I'm gonna try to smooth this driver's door up a little better and then when I coat it with the rubber uh, the the custom wrap rubberized coating we'll see what it looks like um, and and on this back door here it was a matte finish and I went and got some clear spray paint and put over it which uh, you know made it a little shinier and everything but it also highlights the the imperfections so I'm not sure if I actually like it better as the mat or not um, we'll see how this front door turns out and uh, if it's smoother then the then the the shiny the glossy or semi gloss look would be better but uh, I may end up just doing everything and and all this underneath um, in the in the custom wrap and then just leave it all gray and and you know make it an even surface color whatever all across the bottom part of the car um, but you know as I said before my main goal was to stop the rust and I feel confident that this is pretty well done that at least for you know a couple of years and uh, who knows how long I'll have this car so mainly right now I just want to protect it uh, but I'll uh, I'll go ahead and do some of this and then I'll come back later show you what it looks like Okay guys, well, 
I've got this stripped down and uh, it's pretty bad. I knew this was the worst door, but uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. We got several holes all along the bottom. Um, this section right here is completely loose across the bottom. There's just no, no bottom to the door there. Uh, so we're gonna have to put in some body filler. And uh, what I'll do is I'll mask this off. I've already, I've already sanded it, wire brushed it. Um, we'll mask this off spray some rust converter on it let that set up and then we'll start in with the bondo and then the glazing putty and all that good mess okay guys well here's the stage we're at now um, I showed you the rust and the holes and everything uh, those have been filled in with uh, aluminum screen wire and Bondo and this is the second coat of Bondo and uh, so there's a lot of sanding to do I never was uh, real great at smoothing out Bondo and making it disappear under paint but uh, you know that's not really the goal uh, as I've said many times during these videos the goal was to stop the rust and and uh, cover it over and just give the give the car a little more life so on to the sanding okay I just want to show you a little trick here these are uh, self-adhesive sandpaper discs they go on a uh, orbital sander well, right here I've got a curve, and uh, it's hard to match that curve, and when you're putting your hand in there, it's kind of a natural motion of your hand when you get to the end of your stroke is you want to you arc. So here's a little trick. Take your two liter pop bottle, peel the label off, stick those to it. Okay. You can lay that right in there. You can hold it with one hand here. You can put pressure with the other hand over the bottle and the air pressure in the bottle will support it, but it also gives a little bit. The sandpaper will take off the high spots and as it does, the bottle will conform to the arc, to the curve. And uh, it didn't take Oh, maybe three or four minutes and two changes of paper to get to this point here where now all I have are the low spots and uh, you know if your paper loads up you just rotate it a little bit to the next spot well here we are just put the final coat on a few minutes ago um, I've got some glue still from the tape right there above the paint line but uh, I went ahead and decided to do the bottom rocker panel under there it's plastic but uh, just for looks and I had enough left in the can so I went ahead and did the rocker panel on that side um, opposite side wasn't near as bad I didn't really videotape any of it because this was the worst and and I wanted to show how to fix it um, if you look real close, you can see the line where the Bondo is. Um, I didn't try to feather it out or anything very, very drastically because if I did, I would have been cutting into the paint. I would have just had to keep going higher and higher and higher up on the paint. And mainly I was just trying to cover up the rust areas and the Bondo goes well above the rust areas. So, after I uh, clean off the tape residue and give her a bath, we're going to call this project done. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, guys.